I can't believe it, but I'm really doing it. I'm leaving Thailand. I'm forging ahead, mostly into the unknown. I'll be walking 800 kilometers on an ancient pilgrimage called the Camino Frances through France and Spain. This will be the most physically draining thing I have ever embarked on, and I am so ready. I need something, and this feels like the thing. Leaving Bangkok, I started wondering if I made a grave error. Maybe this pilgrimage is more than I could handle physically and mentally. Then, while I'm on the plane on my way to Amsterdam, on the seat behind me, I see a passenger reading the book *The Alchemist* by Paul Kaolo. This book is the reason why I'm here. It was as if the universe was giving me a gentle hug, a nudge, letting me know I was going in the right direction. This is an adventure of a lifetime. With every step through Madrid, I felt one step closer to being ready for my Camino. My friend told me that maybe this trip represents me seeing that good stuff can't happen to me, and that I need to accept that stuff can work out the way I want it to. I told her how every step I thought would mess up, but it didn't. I guess nothing's going to stop me from this. I was officially about to start my Camino. My body, the sun, the moon, the events of my life are all aligning. I'm on the right track. I look forward to the nature, sunsets, sunrises, my feet being sore, spiritually cleansing, talking to my dad, crying, all of it. I want to dive deep into myself. I want to be completely changed by the end of this journey, better, stronger, faster, in every possible way. This is town, and I'm walking that way, but the sun is very bright. And my hostel is behind me, but there's like a whole bunch of seashells. This represents like I think like a hostel. It's very cool. Um, it's beautiful. I mean, look at this. Yeah, it's picturesque. I couldn't believe it when I got to SJPDP. The feeling was indescribable. Everyone has said that this will be life-changing, and I'm beginning to believe that. So right now, I'm going to walk behind the buildings in the town. It's kind of right by this road. I got to explore the city for hours, went to the cathedral, went back through another way to the citadel, and observed the town shops open for the day. I took so many beautiful photos. The city is charming. entirely horrible, but there were parts where my heart was beating out of my chest. 
I would have to find the shade and stand in it, which felt glorious compared to walking uphill. When the walk became unpleasant and I felt overwhelmed because I was exhausted, I stopped and remembered why I was there. Very tired, but almost there. The last part was hard. I almost wanted to give up, but then I saw the sign and a nice man pointed this way for me. I guess like, be good girl. It's downhill from now. <laughs> Then you see it, a risen refuge. The name is fitting because it felt like my savior. I woke up feeling fresh and revitalized. I think stretching yesterday really helped my body. Day two. We took a slight detour to see the Virgin statue, and it was well worth it. I did a prayer and I felt calm after. At the Virgin statue, I felt overwhelmed with a sense of peace. I see all these religious structures and they remind me of the people that came before me and the symbolism of it. Today I met people from Italy, Venezuela, Canary Islands, and all over Spain. No, aquí Hola. estamos aquí. Oh, okay, okay. So we have <laughs> two. It's official. I'm in Spain. Proud of myself. I was tired by 12:30 p.m., but it was not impossible. I just had to accept that my pace was slow, and that was okay. Someone in Madrid described the pilgrimage as a birth, death, and resurrection. And I finally get what that means. I will say that in the beginning, it really does feel like a reincarnation or a rebirth. That's where I am right now. I feel like I'm getting past a version of an old self. I really feel alive again. I'm amazed at the level of diversity and plant life and landscape that a small country can have. The Camino is inspiring me to continue to see the world. I'm hungry to explore. Today taught me that my body is capable of so much more than I thought. The walk today was tough and it beat me up and I was really tired. It made me question, why was I doing this? But I know these are growing pains and I know I'll feel stronger day by day.
Bleh. Oh, oh, you talk to me. Okay. It was the fastest I ever walked on the Camino, and by the end of it, I was in much discomfort, but I was so determined to finish. My mind and body needed this rest. The body does keep score, feel centered, strong, and I have a renewed sense of purpose for this journey. I also feel prepared for tomorrow's walk. In bed, after I explored the city, had food, I got medication. I just prayed for safety. I prayed for guidance. I prayed that my angels would surround me and my ancestors. I prayed that they would bless every step that I take on this walk. I prayed that I would feel groundedness and a sense of connection at all times. I was feeling refreshed physically, and my mind was spinning a million miles a minute with excited energy that I was so ready for my walk. I saw sunflowers today. Sunflowers are a good omen for me. It brings me so much joy. It reminds me of my late grandfather. The trek to the windmills was challenging. It's getting closer. The climb to the windmills was a long, slow, and gradual incline. I found myself out of breath the whole way. I did it. Did I see the windmills, but I also saw the famous metal structure called Alto de Perdón, the Mount of Forgiveness. I was so proud of myself. In that moment, I realized this walk is something that no one can take from me. I'll be honest, the last hour of my walk was very hard for me, emotionally and physically. I had to use encouragement from my boyfriend on the phone. He was texting me every couple minutes saying, you have two miles left, you have one mile left. I was feeling so tired, discouraged, over it. By the end, I couldn't walk any faster, so I just walked slower and I took more pictures. I found myself counting in my head, doing deep breathing exercises and focusing my energy on creating a rhythm with my mind and body. Then I got to Puente. What I'm gaining from this walk is the intense sense of pride I feel and that no one can take this away from me. No one can remove the fact that I walk this by myself, unassisted. It's like a sense of merit. I went to this church in town called Church of the Crucifix. It had an airy energy to it. It felt occupied, like things had happened there. I thought about my grandmother, my great-grandmother, and what they would do if they were here. They totally wiped me out. I'm finding the walks pretty difficult overall. I was questioning if my body could handle what I was setting it up to do. I 
kept thinking of every possible way to get my feet in some ice. I said to myself, if only there was a river nearby, then suddenly I hear running water. Once again, the Camino gives you what you need. mine. This walk is my walk. I'm seeing that I have more control over it than I think. I read all day. I walked around. I stretched. I ate. I was still. And it was exactly what I needed. I sat in my seat overlooking the square and observed the local people in their daily life. I was overwhelmed with an enormous sense of peace and ease. There was this beautiful glow illuminating the city. I took this as a symbol that maybe my day would glow as the morning sun did. There wasn't any wine and waited for an hour, everyone left. Okay, let's see. Oh, yay! <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> Gracias, salud. <laughs> One of the members in this Facebook group I'm a part of wrote under a post telling me, it's just walking. And that's what I kept telling myself. It's just walking. You're just walking. That's all you're doing. The highlight of my walk was walking past acres of lavender fields. So there's a beautiful um, lavender bush. I just wish everyone could smell this right now. Incredible. So many, so many bees too. Villa Mayor. That's not the whole name of the city, but that's part of the name. And so I'm just relaxing. I let my feet out, the puppies out, and I'm just relaxing in the courtyard. Um, they don't open till two, so I have just like an hour and 45 minutes. I think I'm just gonna drink my water. I see a little shade spot under that little play swing, so I'm probably gonna go lay under there. Maybe have my lunch that I have. And This journey is kicking off something deeper within me. I'm impressed with the culture of hiking and mountain walking that I observe from people of all walks of life. This is something I want to have in my life forever. As a former city girl, I found myself genuinely inspired by being outdoors. I think the combination of rising temperatures and the bleak landscape I was walking through had me feeling a bit anxious. It felt like I was walking in a circle, but in a straight line. My eye would constantly be seeking out an object or plant that stuck out in the surroundings to keep my interest, like trunks of grape trees, clusters of flowers, pine trees, and even wooden bridges. I guess there is beauty everywhere if you only look.
wasn't much shade on my walk, which is a recurring theme on the last legs of this journey. However, there were small patches of pine trees and I enjoyed the brief moments of shade they provided. I do miss the shaded woodlands from the previous parts of my walk. in the city at 2.30 p.m. I was depleted by the time I got to my hotel. I started to feel the effects of the sun and the many kilometers of walking on my feet. By the time I got in bed, I wasn't sure if I would be able to get up tomorrow to walk again. I took a rest day today. My ego didn't want to, but my body needed to, and it was what my mind needed as well. I'm trying to embrace that the Camino is not a race. Today, I slept, and my meals consisted of lots of ice cream, baked goods, egg sandwiches, more eggs, and more pastries. I don't have food. I'm scared of you. <laughs> I'm scared of you. Come, come down here. Come down here, I'm scared. Don't bite me. I woke up feeling this word that I learned from a book. It's a Welsh word and it's called Hir Aith. And it's a feeling of always missing home. I think I feel that especially after losing my father suddenly, I feel very displaced, like I don't belong. I don't have a physical location or a tie to any place. I don't have a home. I hope I can find that one day. Maybe this Camino can sort some of that out for me too traveling and meeting people and all these new experiences makes me see that I'm not the only one that feels this way. This is my home, right here, my walking, or it could be a really good distraction. slept so bad last night. The cause of this was an irritation or a rash, and I knew it was in no condition to walk. I had to salvage the rest of my day and find joy in resting, so I decided to explore Najera, which I loved. I spent time by the river. to the monastery, looking at every small detail and taking lots of photos. I was there for hours. I love the old tombs and structures, the old doors. I'm still learning so much about the rich history of this pilgrimage and the rich history of every region that I've walked through. I feel like there's so much to learn about the earth and the people in it. I can't wait to keep exploring. I felt so emotional this morning. It was like I felt beauty all around me and in me. The sunrise was incredible. I felt this emotional richness coming from the earth. Feeling a little emotional. I'm just thinking about the millions of people since the beginning of this trail who have walked it. And I'm one of them. Just the significance of that It's something I don't know what yet, but it is. Even like learning how important Najera was to this region and this part of the world and probably all over the world when you think of it, if you see us all connected. 
to people the sorrow, the pain, the hope, footsteps stepped on this path. It's so powerful. And I get to be a part of that. I guess I'm really happy I came. And all the stuff that it's been bringing up, that's the point. I felt this richness coming from the earth. It's like I could see the vibrancy of the world around me. I could see how special this planet is and its potential. I looked at the valleys and vineyards and the mountain peaks in the distance. And I was just awed by its splendor and its beauty. How lucky I am to get to experience this. I felt the sacredness of this pilgrimage. It's not sacred because of religion or Christianity. It's sacred because of the people that walk it and the level of intention and hope that goes into every footstep. It's a purpose that gives meaning. And I felt that today. The walking had a muted feel to it today, and my energy was so low. Today was a very exhausting day because the last hour of my walk was very difficult. My back and feet were not in pain, but the monotonous nature of the walk towards the end was challenging. Mentally, it was a pensive morning. It was filled with beautiful thoughts, and I was lost in self-reflection. I listened to Agave by Nicholas Bertel on repeat, and I wrote poetry about love. I reflected on my resilience. In that moment, I felt like the rainbow after the storm. What's up? Psst, psst, psst. Why they got you out here like this? Hmm? Why they got you out here like this? You hiding from me? You can tell there's so much history here. I saw one building and it had the date 1786 above the door, which was incredible. There was one thought that came to mind. You have to pay for your freedom in this world. Nowadays, you have to earn it, it feels like. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm seeking freedom. It was a chilly morning with tiny sun. I felt really good during the first hour of my walk and my neck has been doing so much better. I was excited about walking into Burgos because it felt like a huge milestone for me. This was the next big city. However, when I got to the city, it was not the best. I was feeling a little bit down and overwhelmed and just not really liking the vibes of Burgos. I realized that I don't like being in big cities after walking for hours in isolation. Today I learned that the itinerary isn't important. It's what I learned along the way. I woke up and I still felt a bit off center and discouraged from the previous day. My hotel room was not that comfortable but expensive, and there was no AC or ceiling fan, and it was a hot day. I also had a couple of bad encounters with people in the city. I tried to walk it off and take in the buildings and beauty of the historic centers. 
I don't know if I'll be taking a rest day in a big city. Instead, I might take rest days in smaller pueblos that fit my emotional and spiritual needs. All in all, despite my challenges in Burgos, I know that I need to be proud of myself for getting to this walk in the Camino. Even though it didn't turn out how I planned, walking from SJPDP is indeed a huge milestone for me. Today was a good day. Nothing extraordinary or amazing happened, but there were no super low moments. It was just a really peaceful, quiet, solitary walk. I also finished faster than I anticipated. Normally, I'm anxious and ready for the finish line by the last hour, but today, I just happened to cross it. I saw a very powerful message on a memorial for someone. It said, every farewell is a birth of a new memory. It reminded me not only of the untimely death of my grandmother and father, but that all the goodbyes led to new doors opening. As I learn about the deep historical roots of this pilgrimage, I can't help but feel that I am part of something special and that this walk will have a profound impact on my life just because I dared to do it and take the first step. I feel like this pilgrimage is changing my life. It's changing me. I met this woman called Alice. She ended up doing the walk twice. On the second time, she realized that she wanted the Camino to be in her life forever. So she uprooted herself from Madrid over a course of years and moved to this town. She told me two things. One, getting a car will be weird. Two, this walk will change your life if you allow it. I think I'm gonna allow it to change me. I had so much fun walking up the hills. I pretended I was on the Stairmaster and switched my approach to, this is a cool little exercise versus this is torture. Today, I really keep thinking about the different pillars that make up the essence of the Camino de Santiago. These distinct pillars is what makes this walk so special. There's a spiritual component, a bodily component, emotional, and mental. Then there's this deep rooted historical aspect and it's topped off with this sense of community. All these elements is what makes this walk so unique and I feel as if I'm reaping all the benefits. I can't shake my visit to the exhibition yesterday from my psyche. I keep hearing the words of one of the videos about the way being an opportunity for you to learn about yourself and to build a new self-esteem. I really feel that. Today it didn't go as planned. I planned on walking to Carillon de los Gandes, but I woke up feeling very discombobulated. I was so tired. I didn't expect to wake up feeling so exhausted and sore. I guess I pushed myself by walking 25 kilometers, but I listened to my body and knew it needed more sleep. It was the only thing my mind could think of. More sleep, more sleep. My room was really cozy and comfortable. I just wanted to stay in this nook forever. past 20 days of walking has taught me anything is that not only does the Camino test your physical strength and fitness, but it also tests your mental fitness. My challenges today were not physical, but entirely mental. Sometimes I don't even know what answers I'm looking for, but I hear the calling, so that's why I'm here. 
That's why I'm seeking. That's why I wander. That's why I change locations. I push myself. I want to grow. I want to challenge myself. I wonder if my dad had the opportunity to go on a walk like this and said yes. Would it have transformed him? What would have happened if he had a chance to heal and feel hope again? Would he be alive? I'm lucky I have this opportunity. I think one of the funnest things about the Camino is kind of learning what everyone has in their bag and that everyone does things different, especially when it comes to food. I definitely prepared a lot for food. So in my bag, I always had can of chickpeas or a bottle of chickpeas. I always had rice that I could eat cold or put in the microwave. I always had condiments, ketchup, mayo. I would try to take extra at restaurants or different places. Sometimes I had oatmeal, sugar, tea. I liked having different snacks, salty and sweet snacks. And I would always have like sometimes a bag of lettuce, which isn't shown here, but just different things that I could eat and snack on and have a hearty meal if I did not want to eat bread at another place or if I didn't like the restaurant I was going to. I got these cool little utensils that were like plastic and they would fold into place, which is very important having things that are stackable. I felt like I was walking into heaven. Sometimes I felt like if I reached my hand up, I could touch a cloud. It was such an ethereal and expansive feeling to be walking down a long, long stretch of flat road that seemed endless and to have clouds envelop around you. The whole sky was filled with these huge billowing clouds. I was surrounded by clouds for 360 degrees. It reminded me of my road trips in New Mexico. and flow of today's events felt especially significant because I walked to Shahagun. This is the midway point and I'm halfway to the end. I started my walk and felt completely deflated. I was upset because I didn't know why, but I told myself I just had to walk. That's one of the most powerful things about the Camino, that despite whatever you're feeling for the day, your utmost responsibility is to yourself, the journey, and walking to your next destination. If you don't walk, you don't eat. If you don't walk, you don't sleep. If you don't walk, you don't find the comfort that you're desiring at the next rest stop or spot of shade. As I was walking to Shahagun, I reflected even more in something my boyfriend said. He told me, it's not always comfortable being yourself, but it's you, so accept it and love it. I really agree with that. It's not always comfortable being who I am and dealing with the issues that I have from my past. However, it's me, it's who I am, and fundamentally, I would rather be myself than anyone else. Wow. Emotionally, I felt stable during my walk. There was a point where I did feel a little overwhelmed. Once again, I had a moment of, what the hell are you doing here, girl? Yesterday, one of the gentlemen at the monastery said to me that at the halfway point, it's good to look ahead and think about what you want. I reflected on that as I walked. And I concluded that at the end of this journey, there is one thing that I want for sure. I suppose I want general happiness and to feel contentment. Some mornings I wake up and wonder why I'm on this planet. What's my purpose? Some mornings I find the answers, but often I don't. But I still get up and I make a choice about how I choose to live. And every day I have to do this. I have to set my intentions for my day. In short, I take my life day by day and this will have to be my approach with the Camino. Then after, by the time I get to Santiago, maybe I'll know more about what my wishes are for when I enter the cathedral. I haven't left this early in the morning in a bit, so it was a little jarring when I left my hostel. It was completely dark. I didn't realize how dark it would be, especially since my hostel was outside of the main town and there were no street lights. However, I had no choice but to calm myself down. Mm-hmm. 
Sometimes when I'm walking, I like to just thank my body and say, thank you for working. I'm so grateful that you're taking me on this long journey that you did not sign up for. Sit. Sit. Good. Paul. Ah. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. So beautiful. <laughs> My day started out really good and then ended on a bit of a sour note. I'm questioning if I will stop in a big city again. I decided I'm just gonna start walking through the big cities and revisit them in the future as a tourist when I'm in a different place spiritually and emotionally. During my walk, I got to the point where I was angry at how horrible my walk was. And I was too hot to distract myself. I began to imagine what it was like 500 years ago when people walked. What did it look like before all these buildings and highways? Were there more street vendors with food on carts and wheels? I'm assuming it was prettier. I had to use my imagination. And I told myself, okay, it's not about how beautiful the walk is sometimes. It's about the steps you take and putting one foot in front of the other in the hope that a prayer or a dream will be answered and manifested when you get to Compostela. It isn't supposed to be easy. It's quite literally not a walk in the park. It's a walk through forests, small towns, big cities, industrial neighborhoods, along highways, across intersections, over railroads, through farms, and fields. By the end of my walk, I was a little delusional. I was doing a parade dance to get myself hyped up to finish. The last hour was so draining. I got to my hostel at around 4.30. I'll be honest, my walk was short but miserable because I was completely fed up by the scenery. The scenery has been flat and dry. I thought a lot about my giftings and natural raw talents. I think I can potentially offer a lot to others and maybe the world but I keep myself very protected and guarded. I also thought about how as humans, sometimes all we do is ask the universe, God, and the environment for something. Many times we just take just let me to realize that I never think about what I can offer to the world. What are the things that I can share with others freely? I thought about how I should continue to try to be more open and giving in my future without the expectation to always receive. Despite the dehydration and heat, my body felt incredible walking today. I felt really strong. I felt in control of my breath and movements. I couldn't believe I was nearly power walking up the hills instead of feeling like I was in a military boot camp. It was like a slightly strenuous exercise that I could keep up with, and I was really proud of that. Mentally, I thought a lot about manifestation today. A few days ago, my boyfriend told me about a musician he met that was an active manifester. He spent a whole day with him and observed this guy talk about something he wanted repeatedly, and eventually he would witness him get it. And I think what I learned from this is, how can I be an active manifester? I passively try to manifest things, but I guess that goes against the whole point. As always, my emotions sometimes during my walk oscillate and they go up and down like a sea salt and I'll normally feel some sort of mental fog at some point. However, today I felt less of that and whenever emotional and mental fog would arise, I was able to clear it up with each walk that I took. I listened to music a lot today. 
I listened to a song for almost an hour on repeat called Pachamama. Their lyrics captured all that I want my life to reflect, freedom in every sense of the word. Cruz de la Ferro is a mass of mounds of thousands upon thousands of stones of all sizes and shapes. It is built on rubble, essentially. Each stone is a physical representation of a pilgrim's prayer, their hopes, their wishes, their dreams, and devotions. Many stones have written words on them. Some people leave ribbons or small pictures behind. I felt overpowered by all the intentions, prayers, and thoughts left by pilgrims over the years. I was paralyzed and touched by all the energy left behind. I hoped that all these pilgrims got whatever they asked for. I had a pebble that I have carried with me since the beginning of my journey, but I wasn't quite ready to leave it yet because I'm still figuring out what I truly want from this walk. My walk is pretty desolate today, and I didn't see any pilgrims or see any cars for a while. It was quiet and a solitary day in nature, which was nice. My company was hearing the sounds of crickets, bees, and my feet making contact with the ground, and the sound of water moving around in my bag. Today's walk started out rough mentally. Not only am I physically tired, but my mind feels zapped of energy. I feel like my reserves are on empty. My lack of drive and motivation has been discouraging. So I had to turn on a funny audio book, which I hadn't done for a couple days, and it worked. My mood picked up. Laughter was my medicine today. This trip has proved to me that I'm capable, I'm independent, I'm strong, I'm equipped, and I don't need anyone, in a sense. However, now I'm getting to the point where I'm getting really tired and fatigued with being alone. My heads were in the clouds when I left this morning. With so much in my mind the past few days, much of my thoughts circled around the same topics. Independence, vulnerability, receiving help, and that all things come to an end. 
When I look at myself from the outside, I see someone who has felt as if they had to prove that they could accomplish their goals alone, in solitary. I wanted to make sure that I was physically capable of anything that I put my mind to, and I have done all of that. I did this by swapping out deeper connections with people for connections with nature, and nature has been substantial. The reality is, I guess I truly wasn't alone. I've been receiving from the trees around me and from the walk. And I noticed that my tone has been like I was going to war. I was extremely militant with myself. Oftentimes, when I would feel my bag be heavy, I would tell myself, so what? That's better. The heavier, the better. Before, I didn't like to stop and rest while I was walking on the trail because I needed to test how much longer I could walk without taking a break, without using the bathroom or resting my feet. I don't regret any of those choices. I learned a lot about my limits. My limits are flexible. In some ways, they are imaginary. Frequently, I would think, there's no way I could go on, but I would keep walking. I dissociated from my pain in my body, and I would catch a second or third wind, and bam, I'd be able to walk for an extra hour or two. It was helpful realizing that in my past, I may have quit, but this time I didn't. Though when I say I'm tired, sometimes it's only the beginning. My mind and body is stronger than I ever thought. But the past couple days, I've been wondering if I'm burning myself out, if this level of exhaustion is beginning to feel different. The reality is, I am allowed to take breaks. I am allowed to take more rest days if needed. I don't have to feel guilty about that. I don't need to feel like I'm on the brick of exhaustion to prove my grit. This brought me to the most recent revelation. I'm allowed to receive support and help from my loved ones. That doesn't make me weak. When my boyfriend came to Spain, I was a little nervous about him coming and meeting me. I wasn't sure if I wanted to receive any help. He offered to be basically my personal masseuse, but I thought, my pain is good, right? Now I'm questioning that, but slowly, I decided it's time to let in help and let in some more love on this walk. I woke up with a smile on my face because I have nothing to do today. It's a rest day. Today, a big thing for me was allowing myself to sit still through my emotions, not judging them. I'm toying with the idea of just sitting with what I feel, letting them come and pass before making a decision of what's next. Versus being in constant movement in reaction to what I feel. In my private moments today, I thought a lot about the last 120 kilometers and what will happen next. I became so used to pushing myself. I want to take Santiago with me forever, really. How do I keep the Camino without being on the Camino? Today was truly a rest day, or rather, it was a day of waking comatose. I laid in bed all day, and I did not leave my room once. Glorious. This is my last rest day in Cacabelos. My body's rested, and I felt like a superhero when I got out of bed. I was ready to attack the morning. I also felt a huge relief because I planned out the last couple weeks of my Camino. I woke like a child on their first day of school. I was so excited to walk again after resting for four days. My body was craving movement and I was giddy to get back on the saddle and do something that felt like second nature at this point. I left my hotel at exactly 6.33 a.m. However, I didn't get to my destination until 12 hours later. I decided to take the alternative scenic route to Ambas Mistas. I took the crazy mountainous and rustic route. No one does this, not anymore at least. I saw one other person on this alternative route and he was from Sardinia. We were both equally as distraught, realizing that we should not have took this route. We were extremely tired. It extended my journey by hours and it was much harder in terms of hills. There were so many points where I felt like giving up, like I felt like calling a helicopter to come pick me up, but I couldn't. I had to keep walking. I felt so discouraged and wondered if I could elect for emergency transport. I walked on endless thin trails along the side of massive mountains. I did not see an end in sight. I started making landmarks in my head in the distance.
of one of these mountains like that. Honestly, the nature on this walk was incredible. I left in a peaceful and calm mood around 7 a.m. this morning. It was pitch dark, so all I had to guide myself was a small headlamp. This is where I'm walking. I walk through lush forests, ivy-covered tree trunks, bucolic farmlands, with cattle grazing and sweeping rich emerald grass. I walk past stone pathways lined with short walls made of huge boulders. I heard water from streams and rivers constantly in the distance. It was incredible. I felt alive. I felt good. It felt right. I was confident and excited about walking up the hills on the way to Osobrero. Oh my god! <sighs> Almost there! I'm 38 minutes away and I feel really good. My body feels strong. I feel optimistic, I feel happy, I feel proud of myself. Uh, I just feel like this is what I'm supposed to be doing, you know? Exploring and seeing stuff like this, this is what the world is made for. Don't pillage it, but exploring. Baby. Hola, como esta? Perfect like that. <laughs> I feel like this walk is solidifying all the pieces of myself, and the puzzle pieces are finally coming together. More and more. Not all the way yet, but it's there. This day was a bit emotional for me. I'm sad for this to end soon. I'm stretching out the last kilometers over 10 days. I want to take this part slow. Today I ate delicious food, slept for so long, and watched the sunset. For the rest of the night, we talked about the pause in between pain, struggle, physical exertion and stress, then the rest that's required to heal and start back up again when you leave a pause. I'm seeing that the pause and rest I allowed myself for those days in Cacabelos was what I needed and it's what's got me here. What a day of extreme highs and lows. My day started with me feeling confident, ready, and excited, and rested, embarking on this walk. Then it ended with me terrified and lost, in the middle of a forest, off trail, somewhere in Galicia. I did make it to my destination of Samos, but not after walking hours in the completely wrong direction. I left Fonfria at around 6.41 a.m. and arrived in Samos at 6.15 p.m. A walk that was supposed to be 19 kilometers turned into 30 kilometers. The last two hours of my walk was brutal emotionally and psychologically. The whole time, I was in awe of the splendor of this world and that I got to enjoy it.
I was surprised by the amount of homes that were far off in the valley. I wondered of the history of the people who had lived in these valleys for generations after generations, how they created homes and communities and tried to maintain their culture. In truth, my day was special. Despite getting lost, I had a wonderful day in nature with my boyfriend. I got to explore new places, eat lunch under a tree, see a hundred-year-old chapel, and bond with my best friend. I couldn't ask for anything else. I just asked to not be directionally challenged anymore. Today I walked through various small hamlets and towns. They were architecturally unique and threadbare. I did not see any towns, people at all, even though it was midday. There was one town that had an alberki, and that could have been a nice place to stop. Is it okay? Hi, boy. Okay, boy. Okay. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah? Can I go? It's hola, hola. I prayed to an angel today. When I was walking, a huge altar made of stone called me to it. Inside this small altar that resembled a house was a large angel sculpture made of stone. Above the angel was a prayer with an inscription I could not make out. But I prayed. I also love my walks through this province because it's so abundant with life and it's wet and lush. On some hills, I'll find water just streaming down the side, landing on pebbles lining the trails. Today I enjoyed my solitude because I was completely alone. I didn't see anyone at all for the whole walk until about an hour out of Saria. <laughs> some days I'm alone, some days um, there's a few people, depends on the stretch. But lately, going to Seattle, um, Seattle, whatever, going to this next place, um, it's been pretty empty, actually. Something unexpected happened today. I ran the last kilometer or so into Saria. I was eager to get to town and was tired of the pace of walking, so I just said, what the hell, just run. I ran the last 30 minutes into Saria. I haven't ran in months and I missed it. My body felt really good and strong, and mentally I was ready to be at the hotel. My walk again today was beautiful in terms of scenery. I felt like I was a character in a children's fairy tale. It was foggy the entire time of my walk, which I love.
Hola. At the end of my walk, I felt calm and full. The past couple of days have been up and down. A couple of factors contributed to this. I was adjusting to being around my boyfriend on the Camino. I was adjusting to the reality that the Camino was soon ending. And also, I was constantly fatigued from walking for close to a month and a half. My body did feel good still, but just sore and tired. I want to rest and read for the rest of the night. I want to get up early to start my walk because I have a long walk tomorrow. I'm really taking these next few stages slow before Santiago. I want to savor every step of the way. I felt exhausted this morning. It was good exhaustion though, gratifying. It's like exhaustion after a great run or after a long night with friends filled with food and drinks and laughs or after staying up all night talking to the person you love. It's true, I am exhausted, but it's after walking a hundred of miles to fulfill my dreams. I felt exhaustion sprinkled with bits of joy, self-love, and a sense of purpose, achievement, and divine alignment. My rest day today was full of relaxing food, and I spent a lot of time outdoors. I got up for the tail end of breakfast, which is a standard Spanish fixings of toast and coffee. Then we did laundry and hung out clothes outside. We sat outside for hours, talking on the phone, reading funny articles to each other, and also in companionable silence. The most significant portion of my day was when I had a conversation with my boyfriend about how I realized I used this trip to manifest some of my biggest fears. Before he came, I was doing really well overall, and I was having life-altering revelations daily. But I was getting through it. But looking back now, I can see how sometimes I wanted to be alone because I have felt alone so much in my life. I wanted to isolate myself because I felt isolated inside from others. And I didn't want to receive from people because of all the past rejections I felt in society, being the type of woman I am. So in a way, I wanted to make certain aspects of this trip to show my true strength. But in certain ways, it manifested a lot of my pain, hurt, and fears. I had a solid walk today. I find myself enjoying the wet and green landscape of Galicia. Hi. Hello. 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 The forest, hills, and mountains ooze magic. It's like the region is wrapped in a thin veil of mystery and meaning. But Galicia is truly the gift that keeps giving. I was never bored as I walked down paved roads sandwiched by lush farms, meadows, and cornfields in dense forests. Sometimes the path transitioned into tightly packed dirt roads with manicured lawns. The diversity of scenery is astounding. In Galicia, vines creep and crawl over every inch of trees, so much so you can't even see the bark.
I walked past beautiful brown horses with long manes, eating grass and cows lazily grazing. I walked through narrow tree tunnels, over small bridges with water rushing underneath. I was in awe of the trees of all shapes and sizes, pale, tall, gray, skinny trees with indentations that looked like eyes that could blink at any moment, majestic trees with wide spreading branches like thin arms, and acres of forests with limbs that stretch outwards in one direction to the sunlight. The walk was a typical mix of dirt tree lined paths. I was grateful for the cool weather today, but I'm not sure how I would have fared if it was hot. Something I noticed since walking in Galicia is that I found myself paying less and less attention to tracking every town I walked through. Since the beginning, I've always kept track of what village, town, city, the Camino led me through and made sure to take pictures of every town marker I encountered. Not so much lately. Here in this province, I care less about that. Every town marker tells me that I'm closer and closer to Santiago now, which before felt settling, but now feels scary. I don't want to get closer. It's like I want to just take it slower and slower. I'm enjoying my nature walks and the significance of this hike is mattering more and more. A little scared of it, but she's <laughs> What an emotionally rich day. My boyfriend and I weren't ready to say goodbye to each other, so we decided to walk together. We were feeling a tad emotional and needed each other's support. He pushed his bike next to me as I walked, and we talked and talked and talked. We walked together and sometimes separate. He would walk a little bit ahead of me, then I would stay behind and take photos. We stopped multiple times to just marvel at the nature, exclaiming that we felt privileged to experience this earth. We also would just rest on little patches of grass that we would find or sit on a fallen log. The scenes today were spectacular. Towering trees, emerald green hills, vast farmlands. The forest looked undisturbed and raw. We couldn't believe how endless the trees seemed to go. It was wondrous. We were even more lucky because there weren't as many pilgrims. So for a while, we had it all to ourselves. We felt like we were the only people left in Galicia, in our own little world. There's so much strength in the ancient trees. Some eucalyptic trees reminded me of the heights of sequoia trees, long and reaching to the stars. Sí. 
his belly. So diferente. Babe, look at this. Sorry, I want him to. I never had this one. Wow. Wow. It's beautiful. You got After dinner, we sat outside of the sunset in complete tranquility. I felt like I had a little piece of heaven in Galicia, which was fitting for my last night on the Camino. As soon as we got back to our room after dinner, my mood shifted. I was solemn. I suddenly felt really scared, nervous about the fact that this was my last day on the Camino. I was so sad. For some reason, as I laid in bed under the covers, my mind doubted every part of my journey. What if this was all in vain? What if I just wasted my time and savings? I was scared of the unknown. I kept asking myself, what comes after Santiago? Quick, quick! Today is the night before um, my last walk on the Camino. I'm feeling extremely melancholic. Um, sad, a bit nervous and anxious. Like, I feel really weird. Like, I'm worrying about like the walk and maybe I'm walking there too late in the morning, too early in the morning. Um, Maybe my pictures won't come out well when I get to Compostela. Maybe I won't get my Compostela. Um, maybe the office, there'll be like a hundred people in line and I have to wait for hours. Or it might rain in the morning or I might be really cold. Like I just keep thinking of every bad thing that can happen. And that's going to make it difficult or something. I also just feel really sad that... Um, I think that it's over. I mean, I've been wanting it to be over the past couple of days. Like, I've been feeling ready to do the next step, but I think I just feel scared of what's coming next. I also think I'm going to miss just normal and what I got used to doing. I just feel like a little bit like I'm mourning something that I'm losing or that I'm leaving behind. And I'm nervous. I guess I'm sad that it has to end. And I feel silly because I wonder if everyone else feels like this. Like maybe it's just me making it a big deal. Like I do sometimes with things. Especially goodbyes and new beginnings are hard for me. Changes. hasn't really hit me how much I've done. Yeah, that's it. I guess I'm feeling just sad and I feel better than last night. Last night I was feeling extremely panicked and sad and grief stricken. But uh now I feel ready. I feel pretty good. I'm a little nervous about what to anticipate getting there. It's gonna be crowded and all that stuff, but um, I feel 
good. Already. Buen camino. Gracias. Gracias. I wanted to leave very early because I wanted to get to Santiago at dusk and see the sun rise over the cathedral. I also figured the earlier I got to Santiago, the less crowded it would be at the cathedral and I would be able to be one of the first people to get my Compostela. I wanted my boyfriend to ride his bike slowly or walk next to me while I walked because I was scared to leave Lavacola so early and walk through the dark forest through Santiago alone. Around 7.20, I felt this spirit come over me and I needed to run. I told my boyfriend who was biking in the distance, babe, come back, I need to run. And that's what I did. I felt this incredible jolt of energy, vitality, deep in my bones. And I felt like I was so powerful. I was not my thoughts anymore in those moments. I was just movements. My legs were working, my lungs were working. Everything was in unison. Around 7.30 a.m., the sun started rising. The sky was shades of oranges, pinks, and light blues like waves in the ocean. I did not feel anything but pure energy and motivation as I looked out into the sky. I got pretty emotional at this point and felt everything. I kept thinking about what the pilgrims felt like when they finally got to Santiago hundreds of years ago. All that they walked for, their dreams, hopes, and desires, the possibility of it happening. I imagine the anticipation they felt. I realized I'm just like them. We both have the faith for something bigger and better. We all have the passion coursing through our blood. We feel the mix of adrenaline and exhaustion. My focus became myopic. Get to the cathedral. I said it to myself over and over. I was excited. My tummy had butterflies. The feeling of accomplishment was rising like a gentle breeze in my heart.
One moment I remember seeing the shape of the cathedral down the hill in the distance. In the other moment, I was there. I got to the cathedral at 8.19 a.m. When I first saw the cathedral in front of me, it was like seeing a ghost. I couldn't believe it. Did I really do it? I was in a state of awe and shock for what felt like an hour. Then it hit me. I accepted it. I closed my eyes and I cried so hard. I cried from my belly. I felt so full, like I could burst at the seams. My heart felt whole. <laughs> it was weird because I felt this light blossom within my soul, but also I was occupied by something new. I felt like I finished reading the last sentence of the best book in my life. <laughs> no, I am okay, but it was really hard. I've just been through so much.
this is my Campostella. I was not ready to head back to the hotel, so I went to the square and I sat for an hour. The cathedral was even more beautiful at night. I paused in this moment and told myself, wow, you made it. I closed my eyes and told myself to keep this feeling forever. I was having a really good day and I felt like I finally accepted my Camino was over. I took a short line to enter the crypt through the Puerta Santa. I'm not Catholic, so I didn't expect entering the church through the Puerta Santa to make me emotional, but it did. As soon as I stepped foot through the doors, I felt a deep sense of humility. I touched the door where everyone else did and spoke to my dad for helping me along the way. And I also spoke to God and all my loved ones who passed. I slowly followed in line into the crypt, and I felt extreme chills over my body. I saw the crypt of Santiago. Tears started to stream down my face, and I couldn't stop them. I did not know exactly why I was crying. I looked at the tomb, and I felt this deep sense of relief. I had goosebumps all over my body, and something told me that I was going to be okay. While leaving, I caught a glance of the inside of the altar and chapel. It looked magnificent, full of gold and rich ornaments. I lit a candle and said a prayer, an intention for my future. I was still crying as I walked back out to the street. As I walked away from the cathedral, I remember I looked back one more time and smiled so hard, and I whispered thank you to myself, and I thought in my head that I would be back one day. I exhaled deeply, and finally, I felt like my pilgrimage was complete. September 12th, 2021. It's the 12th day after completing my Camino and I finally adjusted. I've been reflecting on the fact that the Camino taught me the power of who I am outside of all the things society has used to classify me, like my race, my culture, nationality, socioeconomic class, gender, etc. It was in walking I felt most free. When I was walking alone in the middle of nowhere, pounding the pavements, all that mattered was my breath, my steps, and my inner strength, nothing else. It was hard leaving that behind. After the Camino, I had to get back to the reality of my life. Things like how I looked, how much money I had, and my career seemed to matter again. I've had to engage with the very stresses that I left to go on this journey to Santiago. I know now that the power of embarking on the way of the St. James wasn't to stay in its orbit, but to take the lessons with me into the world. My life is a Camino. My life is a true journey. That's the point of the way, taking what you learn with you. These past 12 days, I have had to continue following the signs. I learned that the arrows in this world come in different forms. Sometimes it's in the form of a clamshell, like on the Camino. But frequently, the signs come to you as a person, a new job, or finding something you are searching for in an unexpected place. There was a point after Antigalicia that I got lost for multiple days in a row. On the first day I got lost, I saw a large feather. I saw it as a sign. It was a message from my dad, from God, from all the people that walked before me to forge on. And I did. I was lost that day, but I didn't lose my way. At first, I went against my own intuition. I didn't want to believe that a feather laid perfectly in a random dirt trail was for me. So I kept looking around for more signs. I kept looking for more affirmations. I told myself as I looked at the feather between my fingertips that maybe bird feathers are common on this path. I pocketed the feather because I wanted to believe in its meaning, but needed more proof. With that day, with my eyes glued to the path as I walked, I didn't see another feather at all. The whole walk, I kept looking for another feather to prove that what happened to me was ordinary. I ended up finding a feather for five days straight after this first day. It would be positioned the same way 
perfectly lit out to me as if waiting for me to find it. By the third day, I came to expect the signs that I felt were for me. I fast forward to when I got to Madrid and I felt so lost. Yes, I had renewed respect for myself and confidence. However, I had major questions. What do I want with my career? Where should I live? How do I do this life? The how baffled me. What I've learned is that I have the why and I have the what. It was like this on the Camino. Most days, my how was puzzling. I didn't know how I would make it to the Alberghi the days I was most exhausted, but I knew why I was doing it, to find myself, to find peace, to prove I was capable. I had my what on the Camino daily, which was simple, walking. What I was doing was walking. The how was a mystery every day, and it still is. Getting to Santiago didn't solve that. But I've learned something. When I know my purpose, which is the what and why of my life, then the how of getting from point A to point B figures itself out. I write this, and I don't have the answers like I would like to. Yeah, I know I'm on the right path. I know that whatever difficult situation comes up, I will get through it. If I just breathe and put one proverbial foot in front of the other, I will be just fine. I will figure it out. I will overcome. That's what the Camino gave me. I realized that I'm truly invincible and the human spirit is truly eternal.